Good afternoon. Welcome to ECPI, Behind the Scenes with ECPI University, our online campus experience. Again, welcome to today's Online Career Discovery Day. Today we wanted to give our prospective students a behind the scenes look at our graduation team. While this will be an overview of how our online departments connect, feel free to chat, um, use the chat option to ask questions throughout the presentation. Now let me give you a quick look at what you can expect um, to see today. So of course we're gonna start off with me setting the foundations from the admission side. Again, my name is Howard Moses, Campus Director of Admissions. We will then follow up with our financial aid director, who is also going to cover how to pay um, for your degree. Then we're moving on to our registrar. Um, student records, how to transfer in credits, we'll go into that a little bit so you will know how to prepare. Next, we're moving over to talk about how our student services really kind of helps you throughout your life here at ECPI all the way to graduation. Then we're gonna follow up with how to learn um, using our online classroom community. Um, and following that, the main question that most people wanna know, is it worth my time? Can I get a job with this degree? Yes, and here's how we're gonna do that. So from an admissions um, standpoint, um, ECPI University is dedicated to delivering the best student experience throughout our selective process. Our admissions advisor team um, will communicate with you to make sure your selected program will actually help you achieve your long-term educational and career goals. During the enrollment process, our admissions team will guide you through applying and qualifying you for admissions to our university, as we're not an open enrollment school. You actually have to qualify to attend ECPI. Um, ECPI is regionally accredited by the Commission of Colleges of Southern Associations of Colleges um, and Schools. This allows us to award associate's degrees, bachelor's degrees, along with master's degrees. Now, unlike most of your traditional schools that average, um, on average can take anywhere from four to six years to complete your um, degree, our goal is to help you get your degree completed as soon as possible. That way you can um, not just get a job, but mainly so you can obtain a career that is in high demand. To do this, we offer um, our associate's degree, which only takes you one and a half years um, to complete. From there, we have our bachelor's degree, um, which takes you two and a half years to complete, followed by our master's degree, um, which takes you 15 months. So all in all, if you wanted to actually move from your associate's degree all the way to your master's degree, you're looking at a total of four years for all. So even more about how we invest into your success, um, with regard to um, our programs, as mentioned before, um, we have invested in a career-focused education. That offers um, kind of more of a hands-on simulations, cutting edge and up-to-the-minute skill development. This sets our students up for success. Our curriculum is designed with input from our employer advisory board, our members, and it's taught by instructors with field experience. Our military and how we invest um, with them. It's not so much how we invest with them, but our military services have invested in the safety of our nation. It's an honor actually to invest in them achieving their educational goals. Whether you're in the United States or overseas, we're here to help. Serving our active military and veterans is a privilege and we look forward to working with you. This includes your family, spouses, children, et cetera. We're here for you. In kind of summing up for the um, admission side, um, our selective admissions process, again, ensures that you will be making an informed decision regarding your educational investment and are prepared for an online learning. I like the timeline um, that I'm bringing up now because it um, kind of shows ECPI at the top and traditional schools at the bottom. As you can see, completing your degree with ECPI takes half the time it takes you um, at a traditional four-year school. 
This puts you in the position to be focused on your career sooner than later. The choice is yours. Continue with the same job you have been doing for the next 20 years of work or sacrifice the next two and a half years for the career that you truly want. Our dedicated team of professional support our student experience and facilitate the achievements of individual student success. So next up is Iman, our Director of Financial Assistance. Everyone wants to be successful, but everyone also wants to know, how am I gonna cover those costs and pay for this degree? Iman? Good afternoon all, welcome to ECPI University online campus. My name is Iman Babsiri and I am the Campus Director of Financial Assistance. Um, the mission of my department is to assist prospective enrolled students and their families in identifying and securing financial funds to attend ECPI University. We also want to increase opportunities for student access to and success in higher education by helping you obtain and make the best use of all financial aid funds. We always provide efficient service and financial aid support to all of our students. You will need to apply for the free application for federal student aid to determine your eligibility, known as the FAFSA application. Once enrolled with the school, my team will assign you a dedicated financial aid advisor who will work with you throughout your education at ECPI University. Your advisor will work closely with you to design an aid package that is best for your situation, including federal, state, private, and school-funded scholarships. You will always have life, life support available through our chat, email, and phone. We are always available by email and by phone, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Friday, and 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday. On the website, we also have a financial aid estimator available for you at any time to use. It is important to fill out your FAFSA before coming to ECPI University so you kind of understand what loans are available for you and what free grants are, are available for you as well. The services we offer, we offer GI Bill, tuition assistance, ECPI military scholarships, military partnerships, education options for non-degree seeking students, grants, Perkins loans, federal loans, and tuition option loans. Next is Carrie Newell, our campus registrar. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us on this Saturday afternoon um, to learn more about ECPI. My name is Carrie Newell and I oversee the Registrar's Office for the online campus. We assist with students' official student records and documents and we support the academic processes for the campus. During admissions, um, students will fill out transcript request forms and we actually request the transcripts for you from any prior schools that you've attended um, to assist in, in the admissions process. And high school or GED transcripts are required for all students, and they're due by the end of the student's first term. We're requesting those on your behalf, along with any college or prior education transcripts that you have. And those are due by the end of your first semester that we, so that we can evaluate your prior education and training and apply it accordingly towards your degree program. Um, if we run into any issues in obtaining your records, um, we'll, a, reg, a records coordinator will notify you. Otherwise, we'll take care of collecting the documents while you begin attending your classes. And we can evaluate credit earned through a variety of experiences, included credit earned through military service and college level testing. Um, so make sure you discuss any of your prior education with your admissions advisor. In order to apply credit officially and adjust your graduation date, uh, we have to obtain an official transcript directly from the school. However, we can conduct an unofficial review prior to your start to make sure we schedule you in the right courses while we're waiting for your official transcripts to arrive. There's a number of different factors that determine whether or not a course will be applicable to your program of study at ECPI. So we encourage you to submit any prior education and training um, that you have accomplished since it could potentially save you time and money towards the completion of your degree. And at ECPI, you take a new set of courses every five weeks. Um, and we, we schedule you um, to ensure that you graduate quickly and you don't have to worry about registering while you're in courses. Um, and while you're taking classes, you can also access your grade schedule, degree plan, um, and other things through our ECPI app that you can download on your phone. 
um, and you can monitor your progress as you move through your program. We really recommend you download the app so you have access to your information along the way and you can see your progress as you move through the program. We're also excited to recognize our student success and we offer a number of different opportunities to show off your hard work on your way to graduation. We're also happy to assist if you need your transcripts for employment opportunities or at any time throughout your degree or once you graduate. And next we'll be hearing from Mike Middick and Student Services about the support team that you'll have while you pursue your program. Thank you very much, Carrie, and welcome students to ECPI Online. Uh, my name is Mike Middick and I oversee our student services coordinators and they do just that. They help to coordinate your student success. Whether this is your first time attending college or you're coming back to complete your degree, we understand that it's going to take a dedicated team, coach, and accountability partners for you to have there throughout your time in college uh, up to graduation. Uh, we, we also understand that this is probably not the only thing going on in your life and that uh, when things arise and you're confused or concerned or just not sure what to do, we're the ones that you're going to call. We'll be there to help uh, monitor not only uh, your attendance and performance, but also help to troubleshoot any obstacles that arise uh, that could prevent you from maintaining your enrollment and completing your degree to fulfill your uh, job dreams. Uh, we're going to help provide resources, inspiration, answers to your questions. Uh, we have many methods that we are also here to help field those questions, whether you give us a phone call or use a live chat feature in our uh, system or just a text message or an email. Uh, we also uh, want to make sure that uh, when you're feeling stressed out, you know where to go to. So on the screen, you've got a few uh, just scenarios of everyday things that our students are facing and when they are going to connect with us. Sometimes it's just to touch base and make sure that things are on track, but sometimes they have changes in living situations or personal things that come up, or maybe you're just planning a vacation and you want to best understand how this will um, affect your schooling so you can achieve those high marks. Uh, so we want to make sure that you know we're here for you. Uh, we want to achieve those goals with you and get you through to graduation so we can see you walk across that stage uh, virtually or in person. Now between the bookends of your admissions team and your, your career services team, you'll be seeing us um, quite a bit. And the other folks that you'll see just as much would be your instructors and, and those in the classroom and the support network there. And for that, I'm going to hand you over to our campus director of academic affairs, Ms. Sheila Sweeney. You've done all the things you needed to do to get yourself into your program, and you're ready to start your first class. So here we are in academics. As you can see, some pictures of some exciting courses that may be coming your way, depending on your program. And this is where you start to think like, wow, I'm really starting school. And the next thing you start to think about is, I'm a working adult with a family, possibly children. How am I ever gonna fit these classes into my schedule? And it is definitely a valid question and one that you wanna ask yourself. At this point in time, this actually starts your partnership with academics. And in this area, you really, really, one thing I can tell you is time management. So when you start as a student, your very first class, time management is gonna be a big part of that and learning about all the resources that are available to you as a student to start your partnership. And the reason I definitely say partnership is we want to help you, but your level of communication has to be spot on with your faculty member, as Mike said, with your student support coordinator. Life happens. We have many ways to help you when life happens and sort of gets in the way of possibly handing an assignment in or, you know, maybe an illness or something. And we have things in place to help you get through that time and then get right back on track. So one of the things that I really want to impress upon you is you are absolutely not alone in your journey for your courses or your program. So let's talk about some of the support you have in your community of academic resources. Your program director is the expert in your field. They also have industry experience 
and they fully understand the course content that you have, the tools that you'll be using in those courses. And if you have any questions in reference to how does this course or skill set relate to the industry and when I go to get a job, your program director can speak to that and really give you good information. And maybe you're not quite sure what field you want to go into um, with all the different aspects you could use depending on your program. They can really help you to narrow that down. So that is your point person um, for information about your program. They also are your point person if you may have some suggestions about the program or maybe even some concerns or difficulties. That is the go-to person that can help you. Um, the, when we look at your support team, a lot of times you may need someone, a little bit of extra help. The faculty members are obviously there to help you, but we also have what we call program support specialist, PASS for short. And these are students that actually will tutor you through your assignments, they, you can set appointments with them to fit your schedule. As we know, as working adults, your availability is normally the evenings and the weekends. And that is just when these folks are available to tutor you. So please use them um, as often as you need to during your program. A lot of times you can spend, you know, too much time trying to do an assignment that you're not, you know, maybe quite understanding. And they can explain it in a way to you that is really going to light bulb moment, come on, and you can get through your assignments quickly. Um, the next support system is our writing and math assistance centers. And obviously for online, this too is virtual, but it, just as you see us in our Zoom session today, our faculty members will meet with you. They'll go over your papers that you're writing, topics, help you with formatting, and the wonderful APA formatting for your references, which can be tricky. And then our Math Assistance Center will help you to work through any problems that you have in algebra, pre-calculus, calculus, statistics. And the great part is, because sometimes you're only available in the evenings, we actually have sessions that you can just pop into pretty much most of the time during the day and up until 10 o'clock in the evening. Who doesn't want to do math at 10 o'clock at night? We're there waiting for you. Some of the other features are the online library and then also ebooks. Predominantly in your courses, your books are sitting right in your classroom. They are an ebook and you can also download them to your devices. So it's great to be able to have an iPad or even on your phone and be able to see um, and look through your book. Maybe you have a few minutes at your child's soccer game and you can read a couple pages. Um, and that's when we talk about time management. There are little slots of time that you can fit in and do little things during the week so that everything is not left to the weekend. So really focus in your first class when they talk about time management and think about how that's going to affect you in your courses in your program. Some exciting things at ECPI, we definitely have hands-on labs and project simulations in your classrooms. Um, really cool features that you actually will be doing exactly what you'll be doing in the industry if you work somewhere that use that, say, electronic engineering equipment or software development um, as far as mobile applications. All of those things that you're doing will totally take you right into the field. And that's what's exciting about us for ECPI, that the way that we create our courses, we look to the industry experts to tell us what does that student need or look like when they graduate so we are ready to hire them. And that's what you're gonna see at ECPI. Last but not least at all is your faculty member. We want you to know that your faculty members are 100% approachable and they are available to you they have live lectures, they have office hours in Zoom, just like we are right now. They can answer your questions, they can review an assignment. You can share a screen with them to show them exactly maybe where you're stuck on an assignment. They have set times that they actually do lectures and office hour, but at any time you can request a Zoom session with them that fits your schedule to go back over material or any questions that you may have. I know a lot of times, you may be afraid to ask a faculty member questions because you think like, oh, they're busy. We hear different things from students that, oh, you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, use up their time. They are there and waiting for you, and they really do embrace being able to do those one-on-one -on -one sessions with you. We also have started something new as far as study groups for students. So your peers that are in your classroom who are part of this academic community, and you definitely should um, start relationships with them to look at your homework, maybe talk about a project together. Uh, all students, like the Zoom account that we see here, you can have a free Zoom account 
can get into either a small study group or some of the study groups that we, we run together to really work together through that classroom and know that this is a community that's here to support you. As you see, you the student are in the center surrounded by all of these folks that are ready to help you with your success. So right now, I just wanna show you a little snippet of some of our faculty in action. Hi everybody, it is Tuesday night, November 1st. Here says find all of the square roots of 100. Now, that might seem a little bit strange. Like all of them? Well, I... So let's type in the first command. So it's Dennis, look up. Mm -hmm. Shown over. So as you can see here, uh, there are information when you did the Excel activity for this week, when you had contribution margin on your dashboard, you need to go into courses and go into all courses. Org. They are like the who's who for malnutrition across the globe. If you'll notice the fact... All right, we're going to get started for tonight. Welcome to our first live chat for each And that's just a little snippet of you'll see how well does your faculty actually do that hands-on training for you. And this leads us right into when we talk about the industry and jobs right after graduation. Um, Ray Sewell is now going to talk to you about our online campus career services. Thank you so much, Sheila, for that introduction. Uh, my name is Ray Sewell, and I am the Campus Director of Career Services. So on behalf of the entire Career Services team, I'd like to welcome you all. One of the great things about Career Services is our assistance is not only available to you during your student life cycle, but also as an alumni. So Career Services is a lifetime benefit to all graduates. I am going to now explain to you some of the things that we can do to help assist you throughout your student life cycle and beyond. So let me tell you how we can assist. We do career planning, and usually what that involves is really getting to know you, what your goals are, what your career path looks like for you. Once we have a pretty good idea of what that looks like, we begin your resume preparation. Even if you're not looking for a job right now, we may prep your resume for promotion. Um, we do interview preparations. This would include mock interviews, as many as you need at any time. Externship assistance. If your program requires an externship and you don't have a site, we'll help you with that. If you want an externship and your program doesn't require it, we will also assist you in helping you find a site so that we can get you the best hands-on experience that we can. Employment during enrollment. That's for students who become unemployed and unexpectedly. So what do we do? We help you find gainful employment for the immediate uh, assistance at that time. So it could be hopefully get you into your field of study, which is definitely our plan of action. Um, but it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a graduate to come to us to find employment assistance. We're here for you through the entire life cycle. Graduate career development, what does that mean? Well, once you graduate, we create an entire portfolio for you. Um, again, we readdress what your goals are and move forward with what your path looks like. Alumni career assistance and career advancement, again, uh, as an alumni, we're here for you for a lifetime. So if you decide five years after the fact that you would like to uh, go for a promotion, great, you can reach out to us anytime that you would like and we can help you with your career advance, advancement. If that means seeking employment outside of where you currently are, we can help you with the leads and get you ready for that as well. The social and business networking skills, that's really the big one. Nowadays, networking is the key. So we make sure that all your social media is up, up on point, get your LinkedIn where it needs to be. That is your virtual resume, so we'll assist you with that as well. Um, teach you how to network with recruiters and other businesses. And then finally, we have a career orientation course. During that course, you will work side by side with your career advisor. With that said, we are going to touch on everything I just mentioned. So it's going to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one help. You can also seek the same help outside of the course. So you can reach out to us anytime you want 
to get that individualized attention. You are our main priority. So let me tell you about some employers that we have uh, currently. I'm gonna show you some examples here of some companies that we have that employed our graduates. Um, one of the things that we pride ourselves on in career services is we work diligently to form relationships with tr trusted employers across the nation to aid in the process from graduation to employment. So no matter where you live, we're gonna work really hard side by side with you to find you something in your area, um, in your field of study. If you're open to relocation, we help you find companies that will also assist in relocation. If you're active duty military and you're not seeking our assistance right now, that's fine. Again, we're lifetime. You can reach out to us whenever you would like. Our goal as career service advisors is to have you prepared for your career path before you graduate. As you can see, we assist you in building a solid professional portfolio, skills and the confidence that you need to be successful in today's job market. Your career goals are our priority, and I can tell you, we look forward to walking down your career path with you. With that said, we're now gonna move into our question and answer session, so please feel free to ask any questions you may have. Okay, I'll say, I, can I can take that first question. Okay. Um, are there group assignments or is everything completed individually? Really great question. We have very few group assignments in our courses. And even if you do, if you're able to work as a group in the assignment, that's great. But if you have a situation where, you know, perhaps we have a military, fact, military student that's deployed and they really, you know, the time difference is so great, we will work with you to actually complete your project individually. So it's never a problem. Like you can work in the group if it if it's, works for you. If it doesn't, we can accommodate you working individually. Um, for the question with regard to how long is the enrollment um, process normally, typically you're looking at a process to enroll is about really two to three hours. After we qualify you, um, you typically um, go through a, a couple of things with the admissions team, um, an entrance exam. You also do your online orientation. And then we have, make sure that you're completing your FAFSA, your um, financial aid, if you're looking for financial assistance. Some people actually um, have paid cash. Um, some people have different scholarships that they apply to their degree. Um, so we want to make sure you're prepped so when your financial aid advisor starts working with you directly, um, they're able to see everything, give you the best scenarios. Um, and we also want to see any credits that may transfer in. I'm going to kind of ease into the next question um, that I see. I went to school for 15, year, um, 15 years ago. Will my credits um, still be good? So if it's technology courses, technology um, is typically five years. So some of those core, I mean, those courses, because of the ever-changing of technology, that's where you run into those credits um, will possibly not come in. We'll look at everything, um, but those are less likely to come in. When it comes to your arts and sciences, your maths and Englishes, those we actually look at for a longer period of time. It also always depends on the schools that you have gone to um, things like that. Sheila, is there anything that you would add on that from the academics? Um, I was going to say, well, I think we'll let Carrie take take that one. Yes, that's, that's her, her expertise. <laughs> Thanks, <Carrie. laughs> sure, no problem. Um, yeah, we we encourage you to submit whatever prior education and training that you have because it's really hard to evaluate um, your credits without kind of taking a deep dive, we want to make sure that we apply anything that's applicable to your degree program to help you in the process of saving time and money. That's our goal. So if we're able to apply it to your degree program, then absolutely we will. But as Howard mentioned, in, cer in certain cases of technology, we also want you to be prepared to go into your field of study and be able to get an employer um, or get employment and have the up-to-date skills that you need to be successful in your job once you graduate. So that's one of the things that we take into consideration when we're evaluating transfer credits is 
is it applicable to the degree program and is it the up-to-date skills that the student will need once they go out into the workforce um, so for general education credit we do have a longer time limit um, english and algebra have pr remained pretty constant throughout time um, but we do take a look at anything outside of general education to make sure that the classes are up to date and will prepare you for success in your degree plan and in employment once you graduate. So now I'm just gonna go down the list because we actually have quite a few questions coming in. Um, how do you take tests in an online program? Okay, do we take that one? Um, Absolutely. We actually, the tests in our online program are not heavily weighted. The assignments that you do actually are worth many more points in are more related to your competencies in your class than test, but literally you're just taking your quiz online. We, you know, always impress on having, you know, academic honesty that you're just doing your test and not looking or using any other resources at that time. You can study a little before the test. Um, and normally the quizzes, there's probably about 10 questions on a quiz each week. And then you probably, if there's a, if there is a final in the class and every class does not have tests, I'll tell you that as well. Um, you may have projects. But the final normally are usually 50 questions, but again, not heavily weighted, um, probably not more than um, five to 10% of your grade. Um, and the quizzes are probably not more in a lot of times than like two or 3% of your grade for each week. Okay. Do I ever have to go to the, um, a campus ever? Um, I'll go ahead and answer that one. Um, you actually do not ever, you never have to attend a campus um, with our online program. Um, again, we try to make sure we deliver a very hands-on approach so that you're able to accomplish everything. Now, with that being said, if you're in a location um, near one of our campuses throughout Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, um, Florida, and Orlando, or also um, in San Antonio, Texas, um, you're able to go and utilize those labs at your convenience. You can participate in some of the clubs at those locations. Um, and you can use any resources right there at those campuses um, because you are an ECPI student. Next question, how do you do labs for electronics online? Okay, I'll take that one. So <laughs> our electronics online is pretty exciting because we, uh, we have multi-SIM which actually simulates um, the labs. But we also have components that we supply the students that you actually will be doing those labs hands on. We're in transition right now with an actually a smaller component than what we're currently using in the classroom that fits in the palm of your hand. So we're hoping in the next few terms to actually be rolling that out to students and you pretty much can perform any of the electronical engineering functions um, on that device um, with some other attachments and, and a toolkit. Um, and then as you get up in your higher level classes, there's other components that the students receive to be doing hands-on labs um, in those classes as well. Perfect. Um, a question, do you have to write a thesis if you are doing a master's degree? No, we do not have you write a thesis. In our master's programs, we're really focusing on what you need, again, in the industry and what that's what's going to take you to the next level, um, possibly a new position that you may want or just to get better in the current field that you're in or to find a, an initial job in that field. So most of our focus is on doing project work um, and doing actual assignments that things that you would happen every day in your work environment and to mimic those so that when you leave that class, you have that management skill or you have that software skill um, that's going to really help you in your position. Perfect. Um, are there any questions or are there any scholarships or grants available to help with tuition? Iman? Yes, uh, we have scholarships and grants available for you. The first thing we ask students to um, do is a FAFSA, is a free application for federal student aid. After completing your FAFSA, you will right away know if you're eligible for free money, which is referred to as Pell Grant and federal loans. All students uh, eligible for Pell Grant are also uh, awarded a um, grant called SEOG, 
Um, and we do have scholarships. We have military scholarships and institutional scholarships, uh, which we um, award at the end of your degree. We call them graduate scholarships. Okay. Um, I have a degree outside of the USA. Can I still attend your school? So I'll take that one. Um, high school or G graduation is required to attend ACI, uh, but if, uh, even if you achieve that um, credential, like you attended secondary school outside of the United States, um, you're still absolutely eligible to attend. Uh, what we require is that you have an educational evaluation done um, by a, a NACES member organization, which basically just evaluates your credits and um, certifies that it's, it's um, comparable to U.S. high school completion. Um, and that's what you would need. Basically, there's just a little extra step in the admissions process to go ahead and submit those documents. If you have attended post-secondary level education, like college university education outside of the United States, you can also submit those transcripts um, for transfer eligibility into your program, depending again whether they're applicable in the time frame and, and how you did in your courses and, and if they'll prepare you um, for success in your degree program here at ECPI. Um, and it's the same process. We just have to get the educational equivalency evaluation um, and that's basically submitting your transcripts, your international transcripts to a company so they can equate it to the U.S. education um, credits and grades and, and make sure that we're applying credits appropriately into your program. Perfect. Carrie, I think the next question applies to you as well. Um, who do we ask about, who do we ask about which of our credits will transfer? Okay, but if you're um, through the admissions process, you can work with your admissions advisor um, and they'll guide you through the process of getting, um, if you have unofficial transcripts or degree plans from prior schools that you wanted to submit to get an idea of what would transfer over into your program um, once you start, then you can definitely work with your admissions advisor to get that information. They'll submit it through the evaluation process um, and you should get an idea in roughly 48 hours. Um, on what you can expect um, to apply towards your degree plan. Now, once you enroll and start classes, then that's when the process of us requesting your official transcripts and officially posting those credits and adjusting your graduation date. But we can definitely, you can submit whatever you have and we can give you um, an estimate, a good idea based on um, what you've submitted on how many credits you can expect and possibly how much time you could save um, through what you've achieved prior to coming to ACPI. Okay, perfect. Um, next question I have up is, are there certain specifications needed of my computer? Is there anything additional I may need to purchase to be successful? Good question. Okay, I'm sorry, I, let me take that one. Yes ma'am, go ahead. So um, one of the big things that we're sort of seeing is that Students really do, you need to have like a proper PC. You can't really use a Chromebook because it doesn't have enough functionality. You can't just use an iPad. Um, those are great things to have in addition to your actual PC that you have. And it can be, a, you can use a laptop or you can use a desktop PC. Um, and there are minimum specifications, but then for some of the programs, um, we do have, say for instance, a software development program. There is specific software that you'll be required to download to your computer. Um, and there, there is a spec on that computer to be able to run that software. If students, once they, and that's pretty far along in your program, like almost towards the end, if students at that point in time don't have a, a computer that can run that program, we do actually offer discounted computers to students um, to be able to get the specification on their computer that they need. Um, but you can find that information up front, say for instance you didn't buy your computer yet or you're thinking of getting it and you're in that program, we can get those specs to you so that you know exactly what you're going to need um, to be able to run that program. But, and a lot of the big question comes up, can I use a Mac? <clears throat> Mac users, um, for most of our programs, you can use a Mac. It gets tricky with the engineering and the CIS programs because of the different software and simulations that you run. Um, it's not impossible, but you do make your life a lot harder using a Mac because there are going to be certain things 
um, that you're going to have to change functionality-wise on that Mac to be able to do the programs and run the simulations. So we pretty much, you know, say don't buy a Mac if you're going into the technical programs, um, if you don't have a computer yet. If you do have a Mac, it is going to take a little bit of additional work. Um, but specifically for the EET programs, we don't recommend using a Mac at all. Perfect. Next question up. Um, what kind of computer, we got that one answered, do I need for school? Um, do I have to graduate before I can work with career services? Ray. So I'll take that. Um, absolutely not. Um, you can contact us day one if need be. Um, again, we're here for you during the entire student life cycle. If you don't have an immediate need, we do want you to get acclimated um, into your courses, maybe one, two terms in, just so that you're set and, and ready to focus on your career path. However, that does not stop you whatsoever from ever reaching out to us. Again, you can reach out to us day one. And even if you're thinking about enrolling, if you have career questions, you can call, you know, call us or email us um, even, even before then. Uh, we definitely, as a team, want to make sure that we have you going down the right uh, path for your future. And while I am on that uh, question, also certifications, huge. We have plenty of certifications available to you um, for each program. I would highly recommend when you do enroll that you reach out to us right away. Um, you will get an e a welcome email from Career Services, but again, we do kind of wait a term or two so you can get acclimated. But if you want to know about them right away, reach out to your Career Service Advisor. Start making a plan for what certifications you would like. We offer you five vouchers while you're a student and five when you're an alumni. Great opportunity, helps your resume. Um, definitely helps your marketability, but absolutely you can reach out to us anytime. Perfect. Thank you, Ray. Welcome. Um, question coming in. What if I have a defaulted loan? Um, what do I need to do moving um, forward before I can enroll? I'll take that question. Um, the Department of Education has several options for students who have a defaulted loan. Uh, a couple of these options are a loan consolidation, where you consolidate all your loans into one loan and start making payments. Um, another option is forbearance. And a third option would be a repayment of your defaulted loan in full. The first thing you would need to do to get out of default is find out who is your student loan servicer. Um, get the phone number for the loan servicer, contact them, and see how you can get out of default. Um, it also depends on how long the loan has been in default. If it's something that just happened, you might just be asked to pay one or three payments and get out of default. If it's something that's been in default for a long time, your loan servicer will ask you to make six consecutive payments to get out of default. So the first thing you want to do is to contact them and find out what options are available for you. Great. Thank you, Iman. Um, I have another question coming in. Sheila, this is for you. Are there mandatory lectures? Okay. So we do not make students, it's not mandatory that, you, mandatory that you attend the live lectures, but I would encourage you to do so because at the same time, it also gives you opportunity to ask the faculty member questions. If you've looked at the assignments, you're not quite sure how to do something. The lecture portion of the hour that they're live is probably maybe about 20 minutes. And then the rest of the time really gives you the opportunity to talk to the faculty member or you can say, hey, not sure about this lab. Can you show us this lab or go through it? or go through a particular assignment and it gives you the opportunity to do that. If you can't make that live session, it is recorded, so you will be able to watch it. But again, like I said, you will benefit so much from attending them and then also attending the office hour that's a little bit later in the week to be able to ask additional questions about your homework or you know, assignments or material or maybe possibly something you don't quite understand and they can work through that with you in those live sessions. And with the live sessions, they are recorded as well, Sheila? The lecture is recorded, but the office hour is not recorded because that's just multiple students coming in, asking questions, you know, getting help with assignments. And at any time, if you want a Zoom session yourself with your faculty member, you just, you just request it and you'll find a time that works for both of you. Um, and they'll, you know, go in and go over the assignments with you or maybe there's a portion that you need a little bit of tutoring on, they can do that as well. For extensive tutoring, um, you then would go to our PASS uh, mentors, 
and then they will work with you. Um, and you can work with them every single week with your homework, which is great. If it's a particular course, maybe you, new content to you and you struggle a little bit, they'll work through with you all of those assignments um, and then you know, give you the tips and things and resources that you need to go back and be successful um, as you progress week to week. Perfect, thank you, Sheila. Mm -hmm. um, Carrie, the next question is for you. Can we attend graduation at a local campus if we graduate from the online campus? Yeah, um, if you live nearby with one of our other ACPI campuses, we can absolutely coordinate with them to attend um, their commencement ceremony. Each campus holds graduation once a year, including the online campus. Um, so we can coordinate with your local campus um, for you to attend graduation if that's easier for you to bring your family and, and friends um, to the ceremony. We do encourage you, um, if you're interested too, to come out to Virginia Beach for online graduation. If, if that's something that'll work, maybe make a family vacation out of it. Because we also do an online reception um, before graduation where you get a chance to meet um, the people that you've been working with virtually throughout your, throughout your program. Um, we always have a good time. So we can coordinate with your local campus if that's what you would prefer, but we also do have an online graduation each year. Um, and reception ceremony the day before that you can attend. Perfect. Thank you, Carrie. Mm -hmm. um, next question. Are there any tutoring hours available if I need extra help? How does this, how does this work online? Sheila? Okay. So yes, there are additional, there are additional tutoring hours in all of your programmatic courses, but then also your arts and sciences courses, your English, your math, your social, your psychology, um, if you need a tutoring session, the person you first start with is your faculty member, and you would basically see if you can set up a time that both of you can meet. If you need extensive tutoring in that particular subject, um, you would contact your program director, and they actually will then have a full-time faculty member assist you with some extensive tutoring, or if you're in technical programs, um, as far as CIS or EET, we have a past mentor that can help you, and we also have a past mentor that can help you with extensive English. So there are always tutors available. It may be a past mentor, or it may be a faculty member, but we can have them available and accommodate your times. Awesome. Can work experience um, or trade school transfer and apply as credit? So uh, we, we do encourage you, like I said before, to submit any prior education and training. It's really hard um, sight on scene to kind of evaluate what you've done and if there's um, college level credit associated with it. There, we don't directly apply um, work experience towards your degree program, but it's certain types of um, training programs done through work or especially trade school courses, there could be college level credits associated with it um, through college level recommendation or so just whatever you have, I would discuss that with your admissions advisor and, and send in whatever you can regarding documentation um, for your prior education and training. And we can work with you one on one to kind of determine what you've already completed and how we can apply that you know, if there's anything that's applicable to your degree plan. Um, but the main thing again, is that we wanna make sure that you're set up for success. So we don't, we wanna make sure that you're getting the skills throughout your program um, to be successful, both in your upper level classes and in, in your workforce and in the employment after graduation. So submit whatever you have to your admissions advisor and, and we'll advise you basically to your degree plan requirements and if we're able to apply any credits from there. Perfect. Um, next question up is, we already answered the question about a Mac. Um, can I take a semester off? Mike um, Mitty. Yes, uh, so several of our students at you know, any given time might have something come up, whether it's uh, perhaps military orders or you have a planned family vacation or something even more sudden that comes up that uh, might, you know, need your immediate attention. You can work with your student success coordinator to map out, you know, how long it is if you need to just drop down from two classes to one class or if you do need to take a term off. Our terms run every five weeks and they 
They run right after the other. Uh, so what we can look at is just communicate with them, uh, take a, a brief time off if you need to, and they will actually also initiate your, your reentry back into university uh, at that time. And that's the best time to have that dialogue with them to discuss uh, what's going on and also um, how you can then best hit the ground running when you come back. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Um, next question um, is for Carrie. Do I get to choose which classes to take um, as I complete my program? So we do have um, required classes in each program to make sure that you're um, learning everything that you need to be successful in your field of study. Um, and we do offer the, we schedule you for your classes as you move through. As Mike mentioned, um, what we talked about in this presentation is that you do take a new set of classes every five weeks. So it's fast paced. Um, and in order for you to be able to just continue working on those classes and focusing on your education, we set up the schedule for you um, so that you can graduate as quickly as possible based on when classes are offered um, and that you take the right sequence of classes to help prepare you for success as you move through your program. That being said, um, certain programs do have elective options or if you wanna postpone taking a specific course, um, maybe it's a busier time when kids are going back to school or maybe you have more time over the summer or over the holidays and you wanna take specific classes. We have a, stu um, a student records coordinator assigned programmatically that can work with you regarding any kind of scheduling requests that you have um, and can really customize your degree plan based on you know, what what's going on in your life, or um, you know, if you need to adjust classes or if you would prefer certain electives over others, any kind of requests that you have. Um, but if you wanna be completely hands off, we'll take care of everything for you and you can just attend classes and we'll make sure that you graduate as quickly as possible with all of the classes in the right order. Sorry about that. Next question. Um, and actually, um, someone had asked a question a little while ago, is, it, is Zoom being used for um, the chat presentation? Um, it is. However, this is more of a webinar part of Zoom. So it's not actual, you would not have to chat back and forth with the teacher. You'll actually be able to talk directly back and forth. That will actually be live interaction, not a series of chats. Um, this is one way that we can kind of control everybody talking at once. You'll also see everyone on your screen that is participating in that, um, in your actual, um, your Zoom session with that professor. So that was a good question. Thank you. Um, next question. You mentioned certification programs and they tie, are they tied into the program and covered by financial aid, or will I be required to pay cash separately for cert um, courses or certifications as a whole? That's a great question, and I'm happy you mentioned it. Um, Ray, can you help her out on that? Absolutely. So with the certifications, they are tied into your program. Uh, you will get a list. Again, we attach it to our welcome email, but anybody can give that to you anytime. As a matter of fact, you can go to the ECPI online um, dot com website under student resources and click the certifications tab. It'll give you great information on the certifications. The list, uh, the link to the list is there. Um, gives you step by step how to go about um, getting that certification. Next to each certification, there's courses that are required that you complete before you can test for that certification. Um, now, as a student, there are five vouchers that you receive, and they're $15 each. So you pay $15 for these certifications. Let's say you don't pass the exam the first time, you can utilize a voucher to retake that exam. When you uh, graduate and you are now an alumni, you get an additional five vouchers. Those become $20 for each exam. Um, but the same thing applies if you need to use another voucher. Uh, to retake a test, you can. If you pass the test the first go around, you've got four other certification uh, vouchers uh, to utilize. But I would definitely check out the ecpionline.com student resources section and read more uh, about the certifications and take a look through them on and on what we offer. There's 
quite a few, um, too many to name, but absolutely, I think $15 out of pocket as a student and 20 as an alumni is a phenomenal um, thing to have uh, at your wayside to really help you become marketable. Thank you, Ray. And as many people know, these certifications can be from anywhere from 100 to over $1,000 for some of these certifications. Absolutely. So it really is a, a great um, benefit to our students. Um, and yes, you have to be a student um, at our university to actually get that um, benefit. Um, yeah. We don't just register or sign people up. I know sometimes people will ask, well, can I just take the certs or study what I need for the certs? So um, that's something that we don't have. Next question that I have is, are there entrance exams? Um, and as we discussed a little bit earlier, we're not an enroll, open enrollment school. I love the fact that we do an assessment. Um, I don't say entrance exams. We do an assessment to find out where you are. Um, we don't want to be that school that just says, yep, yeah, sign right here and you're in college. This is a huge commitment. School, this is really school. This is something that you have to kind of make sure this is right. We want to qualify you. Our programs are not your typical day in the mill programs. Um, electronics engineering is math intensive. We can't just have you jumping into that program. Um, something, so yes, we do have an entrance assessment to make sure that you qualify. Um, I see a later question that comes up is, how, you know, what if I do bad on the entrance um, assessments? That's okay, we have a boot camp. We know a lot of people have not looked at what is seven times five and a whole lot of different math equations when it comes to algebra or things like that. So um, you do have, um, the first time you just wanna see where you're at. The next time you actually take it, um, if you need to take it, um, you'll have time to practice. We have a boot camp that you can go through um, that's right there on the website um, and you'll be good to go. So we, we really wanna make sure you're successful, but it's a good indicator. and you should be happy that a school actually says, hey, we're just not gonna let you come in here. That's how I look at that. Um, next question, um, do you observe holidays, spring, summer, um, winter? Um, what if I want to take two weeks off? I know Mike answered the question about taking time off from school. Um, when it comes to actual holidays, we typically do have two um, weeks out of the year that students are off. And you have to remember, and those times are in July and in December. Again, you have to remember the whole purpose um, and one of our goals is to help you to graduate as soon as possible. The way we're able to do that is by going through um, throughout the year, five classes, I mean, two classes every five weeks so that you can graduate in two and a half years so that way you're working in the field sooner than later. So um, yes, we do give you a couple of breaks a year. Um, and again, you're gonna have times where you might need to talk to your um, student success coordinator to maybe take a term off or something like that. As um, long as you're communicating and working with us, and com um, again, communication is the key. Let us know what's going on so we can better assist you. Next questions, are all live sessions in the evening? I have a special needs child um, and lectures during, during his school day would be more convenient. Okay, I can take that one. The live lectures are in the evening and the open session or the office hour can be either anytime from Thursday, Friday or on the weekends. But if you're, the time that you can meet is during the day is more convenient, you can talk to your faculty member and set up a personal session with them um, to meet with you. If that particular faculty member may be an adjunct faculty member that actually works during the day, we also would be able to have you meet with a full-time faculty member who's available during the day, or possibly one of our past mentors that knows the content well um, to help you go over that, the, you know, whatever you need for that week, or if there's a particular assignment that you want help with, there, there will be availability for you. Awesome. Thank you, Sheila. I'm just checking the questions. Um, we answered that one. It's the school prep office applications. Um, the question is, does the school provide office applications? Right, Office 360. They're saying, yeah, Microsoft Office. You, go ahead, Sheila, you can talk. Okay, so Microsoft Office 360, which is cloud-based, is 
uh, offer to all students. So you have full access and you can use that across devices. So it's really great that you can actually be working on your computer and then, you know, in turn be working on your iPad and still want to send an assignment over. And because you can actually save your assignments in 360, um, you would be able to use multiple devices and access your schoolwork. And we also, in addition to the office applications, for our learning management system, we do have an app. So you also can access your classroom on a mobile device, either your phone, iPad, you know, other um, smart devices that you will be able to see your grades, your discussion questions, your assignments. So there's many options for you to be on the go and still be able to use um, you know, your phone, iPads and things to be able to you know, keep up and do some of your work or be checking into your classroom or just emailing or texting your faculty member. Perfect. That um, ends the question and answer period. We thank you again for joining us today um, for our campus or career discovery day. Um, it's time to get ready and go to school. Let's get it over with. You have a team here that is definitely willing and able to help you out. And, and we truly wanna make sure you're receiving the service um, needed to be successful. So again, welcome to ECPI. We look forward to helping you guys um, in the near future. Have a great day. See you at graduation. See you at graduation. Yes.